Greg Laurie claims that in 1948, when the Jewish people acquired the land they now refer to as Israel, it marked the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. According to him, the Bible states that in the end times, Israel would be dispersed and then regathered, and he believes that this has already occurred. Prophecy. The Bible tells us in the end times that Israel would be scattered and regathered. This has happened. You want to talk about signs of the times, the super sign of the last days, and really the sign that sets the prophetic clock ticking is the regathering of the nation Israel into their homeland. On the heels of the Holocaust, who would have ever thought that these Jewish people who lost six million uh, of their people uh, to the Nazis would somehow regather in their homeland, but it happened against all odds. And on May 14th, 1948, Israel became a nation. I'm proud to say the United States was the first nation to acknowledge that. In fact, a significant number of Christians, especially those who adhere to evangelical or dispensationalist beliefs, the resurgence of Israel as a sovereign nation is widely regarded as a profound realization of long-standing biblical prophecies. But is this true? How can we verify any of this? I hold no bias against any religion, group, or people. My sole allegiance lies with the pursuit of truth. I'm driven by a genuine desire to follow the Most High and embrace His commandments. My journey began when I grew weary of being swayed by various preachers and relying on their interpretations of what they deemed as truth. It was only through diligent study, repeated readings of the scriptures and the grace of the Most High that the clarity of biblical truths were revealed to me. I firmly believe that for something to be recognized as fulfillment of biblical prophecy, it must align with all aspects of that prophecy, not just some of them. Otherwise, it can't be considered a true part of prophecy. So here are some verses that deal with Israel being gathered in the future, or let's see if it's already happened. So let's start by reading Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 3 and 4. Then the Most High thy Elohim will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whether the Most High thy Elohim has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out to the outmost parts of heaven, from there will the Most High thy Elohim gather thee, and from there will he fetch thee. Elohim promises to restore and show mercy to the Israelites, gathering them back from all places that they were scattered even if they are in the most remote locations. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall set his hand the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign from the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So this verse in Isaiah, in a future day, the Most High will once again gather the remaining Israelites from various nations around the world. He will raise a signal for all nations, uniting and bringing back both scattered Israelites and dispersed Judeans from every part of the earth. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 8. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come back in the land that is brought back from the sword. It shall be gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste. But it is brought back out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely all of them. Verse 11, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates. Verse 14, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, Thus saith the Most High thy Elohim, In the day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shall thou not know it. In Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 8, the prophecy speaks of a time in a distant future when a force or a nation, Gog and Magog, will want to invade Israel. This will occur after Israel has been restored and has gathered its people from various nations. Israel will be living in peace and safety before this prophesied invasion. Verse 11 explains when Israel is gathered, they will be living without walls or gates. Verse 14, Elohim instructs the prophet Ezekiel to deliver a message. The essence of this message is a question. When the people of Israel are living in peace and security, will you not know it? In summary, these verses foreshadow a time when Israel is living in peace, but an entity named Gog and Magog is set to disrupt this tranquility. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 10. 
And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words and shall say unto thee, Wherefore has the Most High pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Most High thou Elohim? Thou shalt say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Most High, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law, Therefore I will cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers. And there shall you serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Therefore behold, the days come, saith the Most High, that it shall no more be said, The Most High liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Most High liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all lands where he had driven them and I will bring them again to their land that I gave unto their fathers. In Jeremiah, when the people of Israel asked why has Elohim decreed harsh judgments against them, they are told because their ancestors abandoned the Most High and worshipped other deities and did not keep his commandments. As a consequence, Elohim will exile them to an unfamiliar land where they will serve other gods without his favor, i.e. slavery. However, a time will come when they will no longer celebrate the exodus from Egypt, their return from these exile lands, as Elohim promises to bring them back to their ancestral land. In other words, this exodus has to be much, much bigger than the first exodus. That's why it says you will no more talk about the first exodus. This one has to outdo the first. Now let's read Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Most High thy Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and I will gather them on every side, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be a king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all, Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. I will save them out of all their dwelling places where they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd, and also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. Elohim's prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 21 to 24 foretells the Israelites' future restoration. Elohim promises to regather them to their promised homeland, uniting them as one nation. They will renounce idols and sins, experiencing both physical and a spiritual renewal. Their covenant with the Most High will be reaffirmed, and Yeshua will be king over them all. These verses highlight Elohim's enduring commitment and love for the Israelites. So to sum this all up, for the prophecy of the Bible to be fulfilled in 1948, all these requirements have to be met. 1. The gathering from all nations. Elohim promises to gather the Israelites from all nations where they have been scattered. 2. The recovery of the remnant. The Most High will recover the remnant of his people from specific nations and regions. 3. Living in peace and safety. Before a prophesied invasion of Gog and Magog, Israel would be living in peace and safety without walls and without bars on their houses. Not just a return from Egypt, but a gathering from various lands which they were dispersed. And this unification has to be bigger than the exodus from Egypt. The Israelites will no longer engage in idolatry and other sins. They will be obeying the commandments once gathered. They will be spiritually cleansed and renewed. Elohim's covenant reaffirmed. The Israelites will have their new covenant relationship with Elohim referred, solidifying their status as Elohim's chosen people. Lastly, Yeshua will be king over both tribes of Israel and the tribes of Judah. In 1948, hardly any of these listed prophecies were actually fulfilled. It's crucial to stand as a champion of truth instead of disseminating falsehoods and propaganda. Many preachers are fully aware that these prophecies remain unfilled, but have chosen to propagate misinformation. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.